Hi everybody, CyberRev here. Just wanted to um, discuss with you Exodus chapter 25. And I want you to imagine that Exodus 25 actually speaks about pyramids, okay? It speaks about pyramids. But you would have to read a version of the correct, true words and descriptions of Exodus 25. In other words, Exodus 25 may have been written 99.9% .9 may have been written deliberately to promote something else other than pyramids. And the pyramids are the actual arc. Yes, we're speaking about controversial things here. But we're also speaking about the truth. So if you're a truth seeker, someone who is more interested in the truth of the holy word of the creator. And the holy creation of the creator. The truth. And only the truth shall set you free, right? So if Exodus 25 is specifically and was originally about pyramids, I'm going to prove that to you. I'm going to show you that Exodus 25, if we write it the way it was originally intended, we will see and know it had to be pyramids, not the Ark of Covenant, not man-made versions of the Bible, not narratives that are intended to promote Judaism or Jewish philosophies or narratives, or storytelling. Because you have to ask yourself the question, how could there be Jews in Exodus? How could there be Jews or Jewish people in Exodus? How could there be Jews and Jewish people in biblical times, they were. If you do the research, Israel was created in what, 1948, okay, by the United Nations. So then, how can Israel be the Israel of Genesis, which is like two to three thousand years? earlier that doesn't make sense right that's why man-made versions of the bible need to be be brought into question who wrote the narratives why are pacific things being promoted as israel and jews and jewish as if they've been around for Biblical times from the Garden of Eden. That's impossible. Absolutely impossible. Okay. Exodus 25, I'm going to prove to you, is about the pyramids of Africa. And most of the Bible, if you do the research, is actually in and of and about Africa. 
That's why we have the Nile River, the Red Sea, Mount Sinai, which I know modern day maps are trying to put it in Arab territory. But that's not so if you look at the old maps and go back in history when Africa was one country. And we can't cover everything in this video, but I'm going to show you that if we put the pieces back, almost like a jigsaw puzzle, and we put the original pieces back, Exodus 25 is talking completely about pyramids. In fact, if you look at Exodus 25 verse 1, and if it was written this way, and you can read from any version of any other Bible and follow along with what I've written as the truth to demonstrate that Exodus 25 is 100% about pyramids, not the Ark of Covenant. It's about kings and queens of Africa ruling over the Garden of Eden, Africa, over pyramids and monuments of royalty. Biblical royalty. And what they've done for modern religions is try to make it out that it's the Ark of Covenant. They've changed the narratives, specifically and deliberately for their own man-made religions and ideologies, which is not true. So how could pyramids now come down to looking like the Ark of Covenant? And if you notice that it has two angels at the top here and the wings pointing to each other, that sort of things. This is like a miniature creation of or copy of a pyramid. Watch. Okay. And the, the pyramids of Africa and of Sudan, and of Kemet, which is now Egypt, were actual power plants. Sophisticated power plants connected to the new universe of the Creator with the sun, the moon, the stars. And that's why no one could create such monumental architecture without having a spiritual relationship, very close relationship with the Creator and with the universe. Okay? I'm gonna prove this to you. This is this is this has been brought to you over decades of research. Okay. It's not about Religion. It's not about denomination. That's why the headline is Creator is Universal Kingdom. Yahweh Ra. Within, not religion. So Exodus 25, we can't go all through all of it. If it was to read correctly, it should read Exodus 25 verse 1, and Ra, the Creator Lord, spoke unto Thotmose the third, aka Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Yisrael. Now, if you notice, there's Ra in the middle of Yisrael. And then it says, Not fake Israel. Now, if you go and research the L, 
God and see who the L God is, you'll understand the difference between the L God and Yisrael. And very cleverly, what Israel did was just remove the Y. When it originally should have been Yisrael. And if you do a Google search, or Bing search, or Yahoo search, you'll see that Yisrael is an actual title and name and word. But they've just somehow ignored any description of it in detail because they prefer Israel when Israel was created in 1948 do you see the deception do you see the narratives changing the words changing okay Exodus 25 verse 3 if it was to be read correctly it should read and this is the offering which ye shall take of them. Now if we're talking about the Bible being in Africa, it should read African gold and silver and brass. Exodus 25 verse 4. And blue and purple and scarlet and fine linen and goat's hair. Verse 5. And rams skins dyed red and sea skins seal skin sorry and acacia wood verse 6 oil for the light african spices for the anointing oil and for the sweet incense verse 7 african onyx stones and african stones to be set for the ephod and for the breastplate. Verse 8. And let them as Africans of Ra. Because we're in Africa, right? The whole Bible is in Africa. Largely in Africa. Rooted in Africa. From the Garden of Eden. Africa. And verse 8 says. And let them as Africans of Ra. Make me a what? A sanctuary. That I may dwell among them as the Garden of Eden, Africa to the world. If we put things back correctly. As best we can. Verse 9. According to all that I show thee, the pattern of the pyramid tabernacle. The pyramid tabernacle. And the pattern of all the pyramid furniture thereof, even so shall he make it. Verse 10. And they shall make a pyramid ark of what? Stone for my tabernacle, not of acacia wood. Two cubits and a half shall be the length thereof, and a cubit and half the breadth thereof, and a cubit. And half the height thereof. Verse 11. And thou shalt overlay the pyramid ark with pure gold. For what? Electricity. Now if I'm going to put this article in the link. If you click on electricity. You'll see why. And what gold does as. A conduit for electricity. And thou shalt overlay the pyramid ark with pure gold for electricity within and without. Shalt thou overlay it with gold and shall make upon it a pyramid, what, crown of gold round about. Now, if you do the research on pyramids, you'll know that right at the top is a mount of gold. The top of a pyramid was made of pure gold that's why they invaded egypt one of the reasons why they invaded egypt or kemet egypt stole the mount they knew that pyramids was filled with gold diamonds 
pearls, onyx. Where does all precious stones come from? Africa. Even to this day. Where does all exotic fruits and animals and herbs and all these different things come from mostly in the world today and throughout history? Africa. As we can see here, kings and queens, you see the rod and the staff, they comfort me. See? That's where they get it from Psalms. Then they call the Psalms David when it would not be a David or English name. It would be more an African king or African queen name. I'm trying to show you something here. I'm trying to show you man-made versions of the Bible are not accurate and they're not true. Verse 12, and thou shalt cast four bars of gold for it and put them in four feet thereof and two bars shall be on one side of it and two bars on the other side of it. Verse 13, and thou shalt make pillars of stone, not acacia wood, and overlay them with gold, and thou shalt style the pillars and decorations with gold and sides of the pyramid, ark of stone, wherewith to bear the weight of the pyramid, tabernacle, and ark. So those big pillars that you would see in pyramids absolutely correlate and are in line with Exodus chapter 25. And you can read it in any version that you want, but also read the version that I'm putting on the CyberRev website and I'm putting the link in below to show you something's not right with the versions that religions and denominations have put out for these centuries and decades and years. And what is the real truth? And in verse 21, And thou shalt put the ark, dome, or cover upon the top of the pyramid ark, and in the pyramid ark thou shalt put the holy Bible teachings and testimonies of Maat, gods and goddesses, kings and queens of the kingdom of Ra, that I shall give thee. And someone will say, well, who's Ra? I don't believe in Ra. If you look, Ra is in the middle of Israel. It's in the middle of Israel. Only that Israel is man-made. And Israel is creator, creation made. Original. Also, Ra is in the middle of pray. Ra is in the middle of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ra. So Ra is there more than you think or know. Also you see Ra in the middle of pyramid. Pyramid. So Ra would create a pyramid as his tabernacle and sanctuary. There's a lot more on the website. And also the proof is in history that the Giza power plant... Well, the Giza Pimrahmid was a power plant. It was the real ark, not a wooden ark. As you can see, they're using the cassia wood to, to kind of turn the narrative away from the truth to make people think it's just a boat, a Noah's ark. It's time for us to wake up. To what's true. What's real. There's also a link here. Entitled. Khaza or Jewish Empire. When you read that. You will see who's really Jew. 
and who's not. If you're on YouTube, please leave your comment. Please subscribe, like, share. Hit the not notification bell button. There's a lot to be discussed over time. And we're looking for people who are really, really interested in the truth. They're really interested in who am I? What is the true living holy Bible? And what if the true holy Bible is written in stone, not paper versions of the world? This is Cyberev. Thank you for listening.